Nanotechnology is, is uh, you know, face value is, you know, one billionth of a meter and that's hard, that's abstract, right? So to put it in context, a red blood cell is about eight microns or 8,000 nanometers, 8,000 nanometers from side to side. We're making things that are 50 nanometers. This is much smaller than a single cell, much smaller. It's about the size of a virus particle. We're actually making replicas of viruses. And so what my group is trying to do is to use the tools from the semiconductor industry that are traditionally used to make computer chips and applying them to making nano carriers in medicine. So we're making particles similar to a virus, but, but not, that can contain medicines that can either uh, fix a cell or kill a cell if you need it in cancer and you need to destroy cells and no one's done that before. What that enables us to do is to make particles that we can control the size and the shape uh, and are extremely uniform and we can put whatever chemistries we want in them. We make films and molds at Liquidia and we put them in my lab here and it allows my students to really accelerate their research. This has triggered a lot of funding uh, from the National Institutes of Health, the National Cancer Institute, uh, the Department of Defense, the National Science Foundation. They actually, in their proposals uh, that they now send to us, the request for proposals, explicitly states that they want for-profit companies to be involved in the research process because they're really serious. They, they want us to get the research out of the university into the private sector because that's the only place you're going to really improve people's lives so we can tailor and make chemotherapy drugs more targeted or design particles for inhalation in the lung that are more effective, maybe even intranasal to access the central nervous system. That opens up diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. I've been fortunate to be part of a lot of different design teams in my career and I will tell you the most effective design teams are, uh, are the most diverse and I mean diversity in the broadest context, you know, different cultural backgrounds, different ways of thinking about problems, different expertise. You bring a community like that together, if you can get them to talk, uh, that's the most effective design team for invention and innovation. So we've got uh, 115 or so issued patents. Uh, there's about 120 pending. Patents are important because it gives you a license to play. Uh, it's really it's a trigger to launch to get things commercialized. Companies won't invest unless they have this period of time uh, of exclusivity. You know, 50,000 people a year come down with pancreatic cancer and 50,000 people a year die from pancreatic cancer. It's really a challenging disease. So we're looking at device-assisted delivery of chemotherapy agents and, um, and want to use the NIH Pioneer Award to move this device design along so we're using a mild electric current, something called ionophoresis, and using a device to thread the pancreatic duct with an electrode and use a mild electric current to drive drugs directly into the tumor. And uh, I, I encourage scientists to think of themselves more broadly. If you get a law degree, boy, the world's your oyster. You can do anything you want. I think, you know, you get a PhD in chemistry, you should have the same sort of perspective and not put yourself in a box. There's a lot of problems out there, and one of the most important problems is, is energy and more effective uh, conversion of things like sunlight into electricity. Not only converting it, but then storing it. Our colleagues here at UNC landed a really great grant. Uh, we're collaborating, and what we're trying to do is pattern surfaces so that we can more efficiently convert sunlight into electricity using nanotechnology. You know, if you look closely at a butterfly wing, uh, the colors on a butterfly wing are beautiful. That's not an organic dye giving that color. That color is derived from nanoscale patterning in the skeleton of the wing. And, uh, and what we're trying to do now is mimic that so that we can harness light more efficiently and convert that to electricity. You know, North Carolina could be the number one place for entrepreneurship and bringing new ideas to market and the jobs that that would create would be really impactful. North Carolina has got this sort of perspective is always looking towards the future. Where are we going? And how are we going to get there? 
And, uh, and that's a very different perspective and culture. And I love that.